So in this video, we'll take a closer look at this expansion module for the Intel NOC, I believe 11 and 12th generation. I have the 12th Pro NOC. You can see the little expansion bay here. You can actually buy a 2.5 gigabit LAN and two USB 2.0 ports that can actually go in here or fit in here. And that also fits into that M.2 slot, I believe 42 millimeter M.2 slot inside the NOC. So we'll try to install that today. It took me quite some time to actually get it. And I've actually given up all hope of ever seeing this little expansion module because yeah, everywhere I looked online is just been out of stock. And from what I could tell online, Intel was probably not making these anymore. But one and a half months later, it arrived. So definitely glad to see that. Come to this little brown box here. So nothing really interesting. Let's just get into it and see what we actually get inside the box. And what we see inside is, of course, more cardboarding. Very nice. Very well packaged for such a little device here. A little bit wasteful, in my opinion, all this packaging material or paper material. But yeah, that's all we get inside the box. Let's just get rid of that and have a closer look at the little expansion module itself. So come to this bubble wrapper and, of course, some anti-static bags and actually comes with separate devices. Oh, I believe this is the cable. And this is of course the module itself. So you have to assemble it. Let's just take everything out of the bag here and have a closer look. So this is of course what would go into the NOC. You can see on the back side here, fits perfectly inside here. First time I took a look at this expansion module, I didn't think actually there would be enough room to house a RG45 LAN plug inside here. But as you can see, it actually fits quite well. So we have two USB 2.0. A little bit unfortunate that we don't have like USB 3.0 because we only really have one on the back, two on the front here, or oh, 10 gigabit USB A rather. So what is it? 3.2 Gen 2, 3, whatever it is nowadays. So only USB 2.0, but that's still fine. So we have a little bit more legacy USB A plugs on the back because we of course also have those Thunderbolt ports. So you can quickly expand those even to just USB, but also use a Thunderbolt dock or something like that. And I have a USB Type C monitor, which also have a USB hub built in. So all of my peripherals is plugged into my monitor. So only really nice to have a little bit extra if you want to plug in specific devices directly to the NOC itself. But the main reason why I want to get this is to get the second LAN. So I could use this as a virtual machine, set it up as a little server, maybe in the future, and just have a dedicated LAN to that virtual machine. That is just so nice to have. But anyways, let's have a look at what else we get here inside the box. This is the little M.2 card that houses a I believe it is an Intel NIC. Let's just see if we can get a little closer here. So some of the chipsets on the back side. And the front side here does house my MAC address. So I'll just cover that with my finger. But you see a few extra chips on this side as well. And last thing you get in the last anti-static bag is the little cable. Just a standard flex cable. And I guess this one is up. So the blue side is up. And yeah, let's just try and actually install it. So this is all you get inside the box. Of course, the little expansion module, the brain that runs it all. And actually there are some components on this little expansion module as well. But I don't think they have anything to do with the USB or LAN controller at all. But these are the three devices you need. And this also means I will completely saturate my NOC 12 Pro because I have a 5 terabyte hard drive in here. I have an NVMe SSD in there as well. And now we'll also house the second M.2 slot to just throw in this NIC and USB controller. Very, very nice. I really like that. Maxing it out. So let's just get into the NUC. And of course, inside the NUC, you have four screws, one in each corner, a little front arrow there. So always give a note of the front of the device. So you orient this the right way, but very easy to get in. Of course, just unscrew all these Philips head screws and they are all captive, so they won't fall out. So let's just do that right now. And of course there is some thermal tape on the SSD right now. So I'm not really sure how easy it will come apart. And actually that was very easy. Surprising easy. And let's just put this over here. I always like to put a little bit of tape on the thermal tape. It makes it much easier to just remove all kinds of dust and debris that will accumulate there. Right here. Just put a put a piece of tape on top of the thermal compound or thermal tape. I also did that with the other one. So of course remove those before installing it again. The little expansion module actually goes in here or the little M.2 card. So it goes in this way with a MAC address label here on the top, like so. I'll do that later though, because first off, let's remove the actual plastic cover that is covering the expansion module. So it is actually made of metal. 
only really plastic is the inserted part. So it's definitely made to last. See here, actually there is room for a VGA plug. So that's kind of nice if you for some reason need analog video out. And other than that, it's all is made of metal. Only plastic part is the little insert part that you actually see from behind. So very nicely built. Let's just actually install the flex cable first. So you just lift off this little plastic here, a piece of plastic, and of course, upside or the up needs to go up and just squeeze the little plastic in place again. That's very easy to do. And of course, you just do the same thing on the other side here. Again, super easy to do, like so. And now it is ready to get installed. What should we do first? I think we'll actually install the M.2 module first. We just get it in frame here. Of course, remove the little screw, like so. And just install the M.2 inside. And there's no instructions inside the box at all. A lot of cardboard boxing, but not a piece of document that actually goes through the install process. But anyways, it is very easy. You can see like so. Just be sure it is nice and tidy. Other end, of course, screwed in the back. And definitely do that before you assemble everything, because you kind of need to hold it from the back side, like so. And then just screw it in place. The screw just won't catch right there. And the other side as well, like so. Nice installed, looks excellent in my opinion. Definitely better than that piece of plastic that just did nothing at all. And now you have two 2.5 gigabit LAN, and of course, a few extra USB type A plugs as well. So that's excellent. And all that's left to do is of course, peel off the tape both of them and then just get everything aligned and squeeze it in place. Hopefully there's room enough for everything now. So I'm not sure actually if there's room for a hard drive. No, but that's unfortunate. Ah, uh, bummer. So it seems to actually conflict with the hard drive that is installed. That's annoying. So you cannot have this installed at the same time as a five terabyte hard drive. Kind of an oversight in my opinion. So I have to choose between either having this expansion module or a five terabyte hard drive. It's kind of unfortunate. I wonder if we could actually install like a two terabyte hard drive in here. That would be kind of cool because the hard drive is actually touching the plug. See here, the black part right there. So they could have made this a little bit slimmer and actually fit the hard drive in there as well. Let me just try and install a two terabyte hard drive, which of course is the slimmer model. I believe it's 7.2 millimeter instead of the 12 millimeter of the five terabyte hard drive and see if that will actually work. I like having that extra storage in there, but I haven't really needed as of yet, but it's kind of nice to have some storage for just stuff you don't really care too much about. We'll just try it without actually screwing anything in place. So let's try and remove the hard drive and install the smaller. As you can see here, it is definitely much slimmer, the regular two terabyte hard drive compared to like a five terabyte one. So five terabyte, you can only have that inside the system if you don't have that expansion module installed. I think a two terabyte will actually work. And this is pretty much the same size as most like SSDs as well, SATA SSDs. So if this one should fit, the SATA SSD should fit just fine as well. Let's try actually before like set screw it all in place. And yeah, you can see it goes in just fine. So definitely no five terabyte hard drive and this expansion module installed at the same time, but I would rather just have the expansion module and a smaller hard drive inside. But that's of course just me. So let me just screw this one in place and assemble the system. So a slight downgrade. And last thing to do, of course, peel up all the tape here and just install everything. And this time around, it should be fine. You can see there perfectly fits in place. And let's just tie everything in place here. I like to cross tighten everything if I can. That's always what I go for. And just take it one step at a time. Especially when you have some thermal compound like this, you need to make sure you have proper seating onto the actual device here. So, and that's the install process done. Of course, with just like three terabytes of less capacity inside, but it should be fine for me. So that's the install, well done. 
So now we have that expansion module to 2.5 gigabit Intel NICs built in, two extra USB type A, a USB 2.0 type A port. So we have three on the back now and still have that 10 gigabit per second USB plug. But the most important for me is the 2.5 gigabit NIC that you have built in. It's just so nice. Like I said, for virtual machines and other stuff, if you, for instance, you want one NIC directly connected to your NAS and the other one connected to your local network, you can do so here. Definitely worth the upgrade, of course. You have to downgrade the hard drive a little bit, but I don't really care too much. I don't really use it just because I had it lying around. It just made sense to kind of utilize it a little bit inside the system. But anyways, pretty easy install. No instructions inside the box. Pretty weird, considering all the card box that they actually use to package this. You could just save a little bit of that and include an instruction, but it is very easy to install. So definitely no complaints there. So that's all I have for this video. I hope to see you again in a future one. Until then, take care.